All right, Christy and Miriam, I am so happy to be here with you. The topic of side hustles that change the world is perfect for the two women who I'm looking at right now. And it's also a subject very close to my heart. Uh, I left my my job to focus on my side hustle, which is has turned into the elements of us, which is a framework that helps people create psychological safety and well-being and create cultures of inclusion, which we need so much right now. But the two of you have been doing amazing work and have stayed in your jobs. And so I want to um, turn it over to you and ask you just to introduce yourselves for two minutes. Tell us who you are, what your day job is, and talk about your side hustle. Miriam, let's start with you. I'm Allison. Thank you so much for having me and Christy. So great to be on a panel with you. Uh, I am Miriam Banakaram for my day job. I'm the head of marketing global and community at Nextdoor, where you go to plug in and connect to your neighborhood. And for my side hustle in August, when New York City, where all the headlines showed up about the end of New York City, we sort of gathered together and started a nonprofit grassroots movement to really support the artists and to change the narrative around the city being dead. Um, so that would be my current side hustle. Um, and so Christy, I think it's over to you. Thank and Miriam, you. It's, it's NYC next. NYCnext.org. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Christy, over to you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Allison. So uh, I'm Christy Sanjaya. Uh, my day job, I'm the Senior Vice President for People Operations at Tabula. We are a publicly traded technology company. We power recommendation in the open web. Uh, my side hustle is a not-for-profit that I started a few years ago, and it's called Exceptional Artists Foundation. Uh, as a public charity, we are set up to empower uh, differently abled individuals to gain access to art and also to showcase their art potential and art talent. Um, so I am the co-founder and currently still the president for Exceptional Artists Foundation. It's amazing. Miriam, so I, I know what the inspiration was for NYC Next, but Christy, can you share what inspired you to start Exceptional Artists Foundation? Yes, certainly. Um, so I have a younger brother with Down syndrome. Uh, you know, we actually grew up in Hong Kong and he's still currently residing in Hong Kong. And growing up with Wesley and his friends, I just see how much potential, how much talent um, the community has to offer to this world that's often neglected uh, by, by the world. Um, when I go out with Wesley, people will say, oh, you know, this is your brother and he has Down syndrome versus saying, hey, he's your brother and he's the artist because he didn't have the voice. He cannot represent himself, right, to share his art talent for, with the rest of the world. So um, I have one time auctioned his um, artwork and to generate proceeds to help local charities and it worked and i was like wow i'm not the only one that can appreciate the artwork by wesley i mean i'm biased i'm his sister so he's always beautiful and everything he creates is the best of the world like other people also acknowledge that so um, a couple of years ago when i met my uh, co-founder matthew mccarr whose brother has also shared a similar history i mean also an individual gentleman with down syndrome but also really um, powerful and talented artist, we decided to combine forces, right? I mean, we, well, our siblings just happen to have siblings like us who see the beauty in them, not just the disabilities, right? And so we say, well, what if we form a not-for-profit to empower people with disabilities, to let the world see who they are um, because of the potential, because of the talent, not because of the disabilities, um, it will be a very beautiful thing to create that possibility. So that's how we created Exceptional Artist Foundation uh, in 2017. That's so amazing. And you had that moment that, that must have felt so good, the moment that you kind of put the art up for auction and people started, started buying it. Right. That's like this. Oh, we might have something here. Miriam, did you have that? What was that moment like for you where you got together with your with your friends and said, OK, it's time that we we do something. Was there a moment that it's like, OK, this is going to work. We have something here. You know, I mean, we didn't even think about it because I think we sort of felt like it was a moment of time where we pulled together. We had a phone call and then we really in like a few weeks got to our first pop-up event, right? And we sort of had a bias towards action and thought, um, 
we're only going to learn by trying. So we, it's not like we knew for sure we would be successful. We just figured we were just going to run at it. And so it took, I think August 19th was when the first email went out and, you know, five weeks later, I think we did the first event here in Chelsea. And for us, it was almost like, um, you know, a trial by error. It was like, we were going to do it here and see if we learned at the same time, we were working on a bigger one, which was going to happen in Times Square. But so this, the first one sort of was our dry run. It was kind of our beta. And we said, okay, well, this will be our proof of concept. Um, so I don't know that we really, honestly, with a side hustle, you don't have that much time, particularly if you're running at it to actually also then think about um, all the reasons that might get in your way. We just were like, let's just go try it. Uh, I think like any of these things, there was a real core group that was determined to move forward. And so we just problem solved until we did the first one. And then we just kept iterating from there. Yeah. You and I have talked about this idea that um, when you're in kind of anxiety, you turn it into action and you just keep going. And I think for so many of us we, during the pandemic, there are so many people who are just languishing in this idea of having a sense of purpose and something to, to do that you know can make a difference has, um, is really important. Can, can one of you talk about kind of how that sense of purpose has, has helped you either during this time or just in general? What does that look like for you? I'm, I'm happy to go first. I mean, I, I would yeah. say one of the things that um, several of the volunteers, you know, original founders, we, we talk about when we see each other is that, you know, out of despair sort of came purpose. It gave us something positive to focus on when really, frankly, the world had stood still. And, you know, it's been a brutal year and a half. You know, there's been incredible tragedy in terms of people experiencing, um, you know, loss of people in their lives. And, you know, there was real questions about what was going to happen around you in your neighborhood and in your city. And so I think having something positive to put your energy into now for me, there's sort of no divide between my personal and professional, my day job and my um, side hustle have a lot of similarities in terms of they're both very community oriented, but it was nice to have that overlap, but there was also the sense of like, okay, we're, we're doing something productive and useful. And then when you would do the pop-up, I remember really distinctly, I was media training some of the, um, some of the singers from the Metropolitan Opera Chorus in December, because they were going to do some media interviews. And I, I was sort of practicing with them, like what they may get asked and what they would say. And some of them said to me, you know, to be an opera singer, you train your entire life, right? You actually give up many parts of your um, childhood to really focus on this discipline that becomes your art. And they said, you know, we stopped singing in, in March. So that was, we were doing the event in December, they had stopped singing in March. And, you know, that was an incredibly difficult thing to do, because this is something that they devoted their entire life to. And then all of a sudden, it just the rug was pulled out underneath them. And there were many artists who did not have unions or paychecks, who literally had to leave New York and go move into their parents' basement. And who, you know, all of a sudden, the very thing that they had trained for for a long time was, was in question with no end in sight. And so it's not that they were any worse off than people than other people, because I mean, you know, you know the, the pandemic had impacted so many, but there was sort of the sense that for us in New York, our artists are the soul of the city. And how do we actually keep them here, energize them, and by definition, energize the city so that we could actually have hope to do the hard work it was going to take to find our way back. And so having something positive to work on in the middle of things, and by the way, something to work on with other people who cared as deeply as you did was incredibly energizing, which is why, you know, sometimes at four in the morning, I'd wake up and be like, oh my God, we didn't write a media alert. And then I would do it. Um, I think you get energy from feeling useful. And we felt very useful, um, at least, you, you know, to the degree that we were helping somebody other than ourselves in that moment. And I think, um, you know, somebody said out of, I think Jennifer Reingold said to me, out of purpose, out of despair comes purpose. And that was I would say to you, the other thing that came out for us was community. We, we met some amazing new volunteers who came in off the website, people who I now, I say like, you came into this effort, we've now all become family. Um, and, you know, we help each other out when we hear about jobs or when people need things, because you basically found a tie that, that binded you together, which was, you cared about the city, you cared about the artist community, and you were willing to step in to help. Um, and that was really kind of a remarkable gift. It's amazing. I mean, the cascading effect that that had 
through through your efforts is so fantastic. What about you, Christy? Where how has that sense of purpose helped you? Yeah, I think for us is I look at it from a different angle, right? Is、uh, when life gives you a lemon, you make lemonade out of it. So、uh, prior to COVID, most of our activities took place in person. Right, in-person art experience, in-person so showcase. So、um, when when the pandemic hit, I mean, we froze,、uh, literally froze for a couple of months. Like, what are we going to do?、Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, this is this community continue to needs our support,、um, especially during the pandemic. Right. I mean, they are、uh, high risk populations. Right. And then so、um, a lot of the activities. For them was also、um, cancelled and put on hold, and they need to go home or stay in the group home, and、uh, very limited in terms of what they can do. So,、uh, so then we decided to pivot and say, you know what? If we can deliver、uh, our activities in person, why don't we try Zoom? Just like the rest of the world, everybody go on Zoom. So、um, instead of just going to libraries or local community、uh, local community centers to do、uh, our art experience, we decided to host it. Uh, virtually, and what the beautiful thing come out of it is, you know, because of the in-person nature of our、uh, activities, we used to be only be able to work with、um, artists and participants who live in the surrounding areas or who have family members、uh, and caretakers who can drive them to the art experience. Because of the virtual nature of the uh, uh, of the activities, now we got. Registrations from Texas, from Michigan, from New Orleans. Like we really actually expanded our impact, expanded our purpose in、mm-hmm. not just serving New York City or Long Island、uh, exceptional artists. We are serving now、uh, nationwide. All right, as long as we have the funding to to fund the activities, we can do it bigger. We can do it even better.、Um, and I remember. Getting all these emails from families and caretakers telling us,、uh, "Thank you so much for doing this.、Uh, our local museums are closed. Our local art centers are closed.、Uh, you know, you shipping clay, you shipping、uh, pipe cleaners or water uh, paint, um, watercolor paint to our home, and meeting you know our family members through this art experience is so needed."、Um, so I would say that. Warm my heart uh, personally um, during the pandemic, right when when things are kind of falling apart, when the world is like frozen. We're like, wow! I mean, every little impact that we can make is is a blessing. So,、um, so I would say that you know that for me is mental nourishing too. It's like, okay, well, we're working hard at work, but then the side hustles continue to expand and help people、um, that. Might be in a less fortunate situation than we are、um, during the pandemic. So it was、um, for me, it was a actually rewarding experience.、Um, you know, which is strange to describe the pandemic in that way. It's inspiring just listening to you. But to your point, and for both of you, how how because jobs didn't go away during the pandemic, and in some ways they became more intense. And how how did you kind of manage that? How did you manage the juggle between between these two things? Do your companies know?、Um, did they know? And and how how have you juggled that? Miriam, let's start with you.、Um, do they know? Well, I mean, I would say.、Um... Well, they do, do now. I, they do now.、Um, I would say, I you know, when we when I first sent out the email、um, that started the movement, I also started a group on next door, really as a as a neighbor, not as an employee.、Um, and then what ended up happening is, by the time we did our second pop up, which was really a moment for Broadway, and、um, you know, I was in the New York Times as a spokesperson for New York City Next. That was pretty public, so you know, <laughs>、um, they did know. But I, I I think you know, for for me. You know, I didn't really ask for permission. I sort of don't feel like every hour I own in my day belongs to my work job.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, so if I have something that I care about, I should be able to to work on that. I think that that's something that's fair for all employees because you know you're not a you're not a slave to your job. On the flip side, I mean, obviously, as an executive, you also are conscious of the fact that like. You know, you're part of a team, and I wasn't dropping my day job. Now, I, I don't do New York City Next by myself by any means. There's now, you know, 600 volunteers in the organization,、um, and so if I chose to spend part of my Saturday, you know, at an event to like help put gaffer tape down, that's what I was going to be doing. But 
Also for me, again, I think there was an incredible alignment between my day job and my side hustle in that, you know, I'm at a purpose-driven company where we believe that our purpose is around kindness and cultivating a neighborhood where everybody could rely on. And so New York City Next was the ultimate embodiment of that for the neighborhood in which I choose to live, which is New York City. Sure. Um, and so, you know, I mean, sure, there was a moment where I was like, well, is this going to be uncomfortable? But then I sort of just moved past that because for me, it wasn't really, and it wasn't an option. Um, you know, New York needed us. And I was like, well, we're going to be stepping in because that's what we do. Love. That's really beautiful. <laughs> um, so for me, so I joined Tabula um, two years ago, and that was after Exceptional Artists Foundation was um, formed. So, I, I mean, it was on my you know, resume and it was very transparent to the company that this is something that's not go going away. I mean, it is a fi established 501c3 and I'm going to continue to serve as the president of the foundation and continue to oversee how we going to execute and grow the, the work that I have started before joining the company. And um, during the pandemic, they were actually very supportive. Uh, you know, when, when I when we decided to move um, and start the virtual art experience, I mean, for those of us who are hustler, you know, like when you sign up for um, Zoom, if you don't have a corporate account, like they basically stopped um, this session within 45 minutes. And I said, well, that's not going to happen for us because an art experience actually takes two hours. So, um, so I reached out to the CEO of our company and I talked to him. It's like, well, Adam, um, I want, want to get your support to use um, the Tabula Zoom over the weekend to deliver some of this virtual art experience. And he was very supportive. He's like, of course, like no one is using it over the weekend. And then if we can uh, support the exceptional artists, that would be great. And um, colleagues like in IT find out about it and volunteer to help out, right? I mean, people are sitting at home at that point, if you think about it, right? No one is going anywhere. So I remember IT reaching out, it's like, hey, um, I'll be online. If you need anything during those two hours, ping me. Uh, marketing, right? Marketing was beautiful. Like they, um, so I have, art, I have pictures of my brother's artwork and they helped me design the virtual background, right? To overlay Tabula and exceptional artists. And, and I was in tears the first virtual event because I got to share my brother's artwork as a virtual background with the participants, right? I mean, that was something that I was hoping to do in person and I, I got to do it virtually. So I, I actually think the company was supportive, the, my, my colleagues were supportive and it was really beautiful. Um, and, and people actually thanked me afterwards to, to invite them uh, to be part of the journey. I think when you have a purpose-driven type of work, and you can enroll and invite others to join you um, in that moment of a pandemic, once again, um, is something that we all can use uh, from time to time to nourish our own well being and our own mind. Um, so, yeah, I mean, definitely something that for people who want to start a side hustle to think about how you can get your company involved and the people that you work with um, to, to kind of um, expand the work that we do. It's, it's amazing. And I, I love how supportive, supportive your company was. On the theme of side hustles that change the world, what's next for each of you? Because I would love to hear kind of what's on the horizon. How, how will you continue to make an impact? You know, I mean, our side hustle, you know, the people within New York City Next was really born out of the pandemic. And while the pandemic isn't over, it has definitely iterated, right? So when we started, the city was at a standstill. Nobody was really doing anything on the streets. And so we began doing pop-ups um, that sort of would show up and disappear. And frankly, it ended up inspiring the governor's office to do New York Pops. And then once they started doing what we'd been doing for a few months, it was like, okay, well, I mean, they're funded, they're bigger. Like, okay, well, how can we be useful? So we pivoted and ended up um, coming up with the latest idea, which was taking Billy Joel's song, um, New York State of Mind and making that into a music video, which we've now done. And now the question is what's next? And because we don't have a standing organization where there's people who wake up every day sort of creating a strategic plan and a mission and a vision and whatnot, um, we're not sure what's next, right? I mean, we didn't know that the video was gonna be next. It sort of came out of a conversation with four of us as a brainstorm in December. Um, but it is something that I think we all think about because it's been incredibly meaningful and we recognize that there's something in there. 
but it is hard when it's your side hustle. And Allison, you know, you have a side hustle that you sort of conceived of where, where you had a day job. It's like, there are days I think like, if I didn't have a day job, I could figure out what's next with New York City Next, but there's not enough hours in the day. Cause by the way, my full-time job is a startup for which I work, you know, 15 hour days, seven days a week. So I was, you know, put, <laughs> shoving in New York City Next into a pretty busy day job. And so it's hard to see that. And yet, you know, there's something there, right? So um, I don't know what's next. That's the honest, um, complicated answer. Uh, That's okay, because there will be something. And even if there's not, the impact you have had during this time has just been phenomenal. But knowing you, there will be something next. I mean, the the video was amazing. Um, The honesty is to admit that I have no idea. We love that candor. It, It is helpful for everyone. Christy, how about you? Where do you see Exceptional Artists Foundation going? So um, I think the pandemic also made my job harder and more challenging, my day job, right? So, I mean, this is public. I mean, Tabula went public in the past three months, right? And then we make an acquisition in the past month. So day job is really taking up a lot of my time as our employees continue to work from home. I need to figure out how to support them, how to support the leader. So Work day job is taking up most of my life. Um, I decided to tell myself that, you know what, Exceptional Artist Foundation is not a short stint. It's not a project, right? Mm-hmm. For me, this is uh, my part of my lifetime commitment to support a, a community that I grew up with. I learned so much from them. They make me a better person. And whenever I can, I'm going to contribute back. So with that mindset, I become less tough on myself because um, I think, when I get all this email from the parents, from the families and caretakers thanking me, I sometimes will tell myself like, why aren't you not doing more? Like, I mean, but I, I also have two boys. I didn't mention that. So I actually have a third job, right? Most important job being, being a mother of two young boys. So um, I do need to juggle all my life and work and side hustle at the same time. So that said, for Exceptional Artists Foundations, I mean, we are now in the fundraising mode to see what we can do to expand the virtual art experience, right? We were hoping to reopen and and do the in-person experience this summer. And with the variant and all the uncertainty around the pandemic, I think I finally settled also on the idea that, hey, you know what? We tested something that worked. We did it four times, actually, like almost every quarter uh, in the past 12 months. Like, why don't we just take this and see what we can do to expand? Maybe this is really the pivotal moment for exceptional artists to be more nationwide versus just New York focus or tri-state focus. Like, what if we can raise the money to do that? That's one. Um, You know, before the pandemic, we were able to do one art show uh, for a different able artist um, in a co-working space in Brooklyn. Right. So uh, knowing that office reopening is also a question, I think the next thing that we want to test out is can you do a virtual showcase? Right. It's like my feeling when I got to showcase Wesley's work, even in those two hours art experience was so beautiful to me. And I am sure he will share the same uh, feeling. What if I can do what can we can do it for more artists? Right. So I think I mean, we have I, we finally accepted the reality that the pandemic is going to be longer than we thought it would be. So let's embrace that and test out other concepts. So I think I I share Miriam's answers. I don't don't know what exactly it's gonna look like, right? I mean, we're just gonna go with the flow um, and see what we can continue to create and um, empower this community. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a really wonderful answer. And what I hear from both of you is that you have this purpose, you have this passion, and it doesn't have to be in every moment of every day. You're going to continue working towards what it needs to be um, at in in different in different times and different iterations. So I'm going to end um, from uh, each of you. I would love to just hear for people who are watching this who have said, "I want to go do something. I want to. I want to start something," but are holding themselves back. What do you say? I'm going to borrow the line from Nike. Just go do it. I mean, you know, look, there are many excuses. There's many things to stop you from doing your side hustle. And the thing is having a few other people, a few core people makes a big difference, right? Because I, I for one, get energy from other people. But, you know, the first action is yours. So you got to put the ball in motion and you put the ball ball in motion and it goes. But the thing that holds most people back is themselves. And so I think I told you, Allison and um, Christy, when we were having our first conversation, I love that Chandra Rhymes um, 
line where she said, while I was waiting to become Toni Morrison, I became Shonda Rhimes. And I think like you can be waiting for perfect, but you know what? Um, just go do. Love. And Christy, how about you? Thank you, Miriam. I, I absolutely agree. Um, just do it is I think the right mantra. Um, so for exceptional artists, I actually took a corporate sabbatical. I quit my job and then kind of pull, be a real entrepreneur, right? And then my side hustle at that point was doing any consulting projects that we can find to fund what I believe is the thing that I want to create, which is Exceptional Artist Foundation. Mm -hmm. So to the people who said to me, even when I quit, one of my senior executives come to me and says, I'm so jealous that you're doing this. And I was like, you know what? You can do it too. But it does take that gut, right? So every time I hear someone say, oh, I wish I can do that. I was like, stop wishing. If you really, truly wish, if this is something that you truly believe in, just do it. Whether you do it on the side, whether you go to cold turkey and say, you know, I'm just really going to dedicate six to 12 months to do it, do it. Because what you get out of it is beyond what you think you're going to get out of from the beginning. Um, it makes me a better person, um, you know, as a people leader in a company, it makes me also better at work, right? Working with people with disability, empowering them and figuring out how to release that potential and maximize potential, make me a better leader at Tabula as well when I try to create this diverse, inclusive, equitable environment for our talent, right? Because ultimately, I always say that we are all differently abled, right? So I actually really hate the word like disabilities because no one is perfect. Actually, everyone is perfect in their own way, right? So as leader, I learn through my professional day job and also side hustler how to work with different people, how to support them, right? Um, so that is my purpose in life. And I would say, people, if you have a purpose in life that you know you want to do, just do it now. Don't wait because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Amazing. On that note, I'm going to thank you both for what you do and for doing this with us. This has been a phenomenal conversation and I appreciate all that you're both doing. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much.